Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Friday Night Bible Study. We have the forum and we'll talk tonight here this evening. We will start on Proverbs 31, part one. But before we start, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for this time to be in your word. And we just pray for your Holy Spirit to come upon us all and come upon this study. As we surrender it all to you, give us your revelation, your wisdom, and knowledge and understanding as we just study your word this evening. And bless our time together as well in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay, Proverbs 31, verses 1 to 3. And it says, The words of King Lobiro, the otherness which his mother taught him. What, my son, and what, son of my womb, and what, my son of my, the son of my vows? Do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which is destroys kings. Amen. Any comments? Hmm. No, the Bible really doesn't talk about who King Lemuel was, but many scholars think that King Lemuel was Solomon. Oh. Yes, and they think that uh, the mother is Bathsheba, of course, and that these are the wise words that a mother gives her son. Why they would give a different name? Well, they say that. Um, well, what I read was that Lemuel was like a a nickname that Bathsheba gave to Solomon. Oh, in a sense, I don't know how true and accurate it is, I read it, but it's possible. Well, you see over and over in the Old Testament, especially that people have multiple names. True, mm -hmm. even in the New Testament, in some cases. Yeah. So. Even today, so he was the wisest, and you know, he had a lot of women, so it's kind of fitting that his mother mm -hmm. gave him wisdom mm -hmm. about these kind of things. But Most of the proverbs are written by him, right? One other theory was this was as a type. That's true or not. But I think the fact that it could be Solomon makes sense. That would be why it said the son of my womb it means it's a woman talking. Right. That's interesting. Right. And what did he do? Yeah. <laughs> Gave his strength to women. Right. And it destroyed. It destroyed his everything. Yes. Right? Yes. That's what my reasoning and thought was too. Yeah. It definitely sounds like him for sure. Interesting. But um, mm -hmm. but I thought it was interesting as well. Any other comments? The first yeah. nine verses is about him. And he he felt I guess compelled to write these, put this in his writing as just a wise Say Proverbs for others. And then the blessings came with that. I mean, if he he came to the point of writing this stuff for others, that's teaching. Teaching the word. Big time. As far as Solomon was concerned. The Ecclesiastes, uh, the Storm of Psalms, Proverbs, what else? Something else. At least those three. Those three. Yeah. Uh, um, <coughs> yeah. They missed. And he wanted to build a temple for God, didn't he? He built he, a temple. He, he built the temple. He David wanted temple. to build him. Oh, okay. That's right. David wanted to build it in, in God, but God said, the son will do it. You are a you are a fighting man. David. Man that shed the blood. That's for sure. But 
But also when I read it said that all of this is inspired by the Holy Spirit. That's right. And that's the key to it all. Not so much not of who wrote it or who gets credit for it. It's just the fact that it was all inspired by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, any other comments? In Isaiah 49, verse 15, can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. Amen. Lord, you will not forget us. <clears throat> Never. And, you know, you ask any woman who has children and love their children, you can't even imagine uh, turning away. You can't even imagine turning away from, from your child. But yet, there are those that do. But then God's love is so everlasting that he will not forget. He will not forget. Look for that. Another mother that might have given that same advice would be uh, Samson's mother, huh? Yeah. Yes. In Proverbs 5, verses 7 to 9, Therefore, hear me now, my children, and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Remove your way far from her, and do not go near the door of her house. Lest you give your honor to others, and your years to the cruel one. Man. Can't, can't, can't leave out the the she that's the great harlot, right? Mm -hmm. The devil himself, the devil right? Himself. Is, is the harlot and playing in the devil's playground, there's a spiritual robbery that happens, right? And that's what I think of when I hear these words. Yeah, do not give your honor to others. That's just be surrendering to the devil. You got the comments? What I'm thinking as I look at that is <laughs> if you give your honor to the least one, then you'll 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 likely do it to a cruel one. To a, one is to rule by Satan himself. Mm -hmm. And it, because and I and I what thought came to my mind when I thought of this was my some of my nieces and nephews mm -hmm. and the things that they do. Right. You know, once they suck, take those drugs, they get that drug in them. Anything counts. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially when they want some more, anything counts. And and for the females their bodies is nothing to them when they need the drug. And and they treat it as it's nothing. And yes. It's it's, 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 it's sad. It's, it's just sad to see that to, to know that to know young people who are just what my family 
Karl Marx's law is where she uses what she said is out there. And out there has ramifications. And Pastor, you know what that means. Oh, I know what that means. There, sure. There's yeah. this out there. Out there means pretty much anything goes. Just out, out for whatever you can get for what you, whatever you give, which is the self, your life, mm -hmm. everything you have. It's, it's sad, it's sad because to know someone that's like that and, and, and a relative, to have a relative that's like that, that is, it's just sad. That's prayer. It is prayer. And that's what we do. Pray for God to open our eyes to draw them closer to him. To take them out of that darkness. We all have them. I have them in my family. We have them in our families. We all have those that the devil just uses to take a hold of. Think that this is what they need, what they want. But I, it just seems to me that some of those, they don't want prayer. They don't want it. That's true. You pray for them. They That's just, they, they don't, they won't listen. They won't listen. There has to be some level of acceptance. If that's what God has to do. It only comes unless God does it. If God does that, God draws. It's not a uh, temporal decision kind of thing. You're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. He takes God. That's what, that's what he does, yes. So when these particular verses here, you know, we obviously have the physical Jerusalem, the Israelites who, uh, you know, dabbled with the enemy and ultimately lost everything. And then we have the spiritual meaning of that, which we talk about as spiritual Israel playing in the devil's playground and what happens. And I just went to Lamentations and I just pick out Chapter 1, starting at verse 7. In the, in the days of her affliction and roaming, Jerusalem remembers all her pleasant things that she had in the days of old, when her people fell into the hand of the enemy with no one to help her. The adversaries saw her and mocked at her downfall. Jerusalem has sinned gravely, therefore she has become vile. All who honor her despise her because they have seen her nakedness. Yes, she sighs and turns away. Her uncleanness is in her skirt. We do not consider her destiny. Therefore, her collapse was awesome. She had no comforter. O oh Lord, behold my affliction, for the enemy is exalted. And goes on. The book of Lamentations is really a story about the glory, the, the, the once, once glorious days of Israel. God redeemed them and established them. And then as they fell into paganism and all those things, all the blessings went away and they became captives. And all the things I just read right there. Mm -hmm. So the same can apply for us spiritually. You know, when we, there, there's spiritual exposure. There's, you know, and, and yet, you know, the enemy can tell us a lot of things and, and condemn us, but but we always have to remember that the fact is that all God wants us to do is look to Him, and yeah. repent, confess, and He restores us and He cleanses us. The washing of the feet when you're already clean, right? So even though we talk about all this, it's very important to remember we can turn back to the grace of God and His amazing sacrifice. For us all. Amen. 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 Any other comments?
Okay, verses four and five. It says, is it not for kings, O Lemuel? Is it not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink? Thus they drink and forget the law and perverse the justice of all the pit. Never happen. Get drunk and forget the law. <laughs> Never. Again, Never. but again, it's also a spiritual thing, right? If your eye is good, your whole body's full of light. If your eye is bad, it's full of darkness. And what you're drinking and what you're consuming, all these things has a spiritual effect on us. Amen. Other comments? And that includes bourbon. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> they're called spirits, right? <laughs> In Ecclesiastes 10, verse 17. Blessed are you, O land, when your king is the son of nobles, and your princes feast at the proper time, for strength and not for drunkenness. Definitely has to be God to do it. Mm -hmm. In Hosea 4, verse 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priest for me, because you have forgotten the law of your God. I also will forget your children. It says, give strong drink to him who is perishing, and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery. Yes. At least until morning. Yeah, that's what I say. That's the reason why so many people do abuse alcohol, drugs, right. all that. It's just to numb the pain, forget about your problems. Or escape. Uh, yeah. Or yeah, and, and many other things, many other habits. It's all just, as you said, an escape. It's. But it can never work. And it's temporary. And those who do it, they keep going back, thinking, well, It'll work next time. I don't know what, what they are. <clears throat> well, I mean, it works. Just, yes. it works during the time, you know, whatever span of time. It's a temporary reprieve, right? It's a temporary yeah. numbing of the senses or just quieting the mind or whatever mm -hmm. the case, whatever is happening, right? right? But then that's why I said morning comes and you're back in that same place again. And then, then if it's chemical, you may need more just to have the same experience, right? Yes. And then that's why people overdose. So. Mm -hmm. All work of the devil that we pray for everybody to deliver, be delivered from.
and Psalm 104, verse 15. And wine that makes glad the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread which strengthens man's heart. Hmm. That almost sounds like a positive thing. <laughs> it does make a man's heart glad, right? But the thing, oil to make his face shine and bread which strengthens man's heart. Well, so these things make people feel good. Right. Yeah, so we, we were joking earlier about bourbon or whatever, right? Hard off hard liquor, there's a reason why they call it spirits, right? But you'll notice that wine is in the Bible. Jesus was having wine. And the Bible tells us that even in the New Testament, it's not about getting drunk or anything else. It's, uh, it, I think he told Timothy or somebody, with your infirmities, mix some wine into your water because of your infirmities, right? And whatever else. So wine was a very common thing, uh, but I'm sure it was in much more moderation than most people are doing today. Again, like with a meal or something like that, help you relax. Uh, just, but it always comes back to being led by the Spirit when it comes to these things. We don't want to get caught up in the law. If, if God, you know, convicts you, be, somebody, because they're drinking wine, and maybe he wants us, uh, one person not to drink it at all, and one person to have just a glass with dinner or whatever just it's all about walking in the spirit but wine isn't necessarily a bad thing we drink the wine to remember the blood of jesus mm -hmm. so we know that wine is a is a, a good thing in the sense of that right mm -hmm. so i think you know this particular verse is talking about positive things right in my case the oil comes naturally i don't need mm -hmm. to add it <laughs> but uh anyway um but yeah this is not about getting drunk this is jesus turned the water into wine yes and if you look at this spiritually wine oil bread that is mentioned in the new testament he is the bread of life and the oil is anointing oil the wine like you mentioned Blood. The blood. Yep. Right. In a way, it's foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? In Ephesians 5, verse 18. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Dissipation. What is exactly the meaning of that? Uh, dissipation. In the official... That was my question as well. Spread out. So Oxford Dictionary. Oh. Yeah, so Oxford Dictionary, you can have this, you can either cause something to disappear, or in the second sense, it's probably more uh, what they're talking about here is squander or fritter away either money, energy, or resources. Just, you know, squandered it all. It's, it, which fits what we're talking about with our, our verse, right? Like, there's also a spiritual aspect to that. I'll tell you that when I was uh, doing active ministry and God was sending me to hospitals and so forth, I was um, 
there were sometimes I would have a glass of wine with dinner. And one night I got called to uh, to go to the hospital after I'd had a glass of wine. And for me, a glass of wine is a lot. And it affected my ability to go and minister to that person. And I went years without any wine after that. Mm -hmm. And I realized, you know, I needed to be ready at all times for whatever God had. Mm -hmm. So um, there's so many little things to take in consideration. That's why you, you just have to be led by the Spirit. Thank you. Great. We have a comment. Verses 8 and 9. It says, Open your mouth for the speechless in the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor in the I mean, this is a word for us. Of course, we have to let God guide our words. Um, if, if we're in a situation where we see somebody um, needing help, somebody poor and needy, we could be poor and needy materially or spiritually. Um, God wants us to open our mouths, but not, not quickly. We need to hear what he's telling us so that what comes out of our mouth will be what he intends. Um, you know, people could maybe misuse this verse uh, gives them permission to judge right <laughs> righteously you know what I mean it's like yes, absolutely. absolutely um so yeah that's kind of how I see in this because the only way we can judge righteously is Christ in us. That's the only way. We can't do it on our own. So be slow to speak and let God lead you and then open your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Just as the law was a stumbling block for the Israelites, works can be a stumbling block for Christians. We can read something in a book and say we have to go and do it, right? And that is dangerous. If we're speaking from our own resources, now, whether it's judging righteously, but pleasing, ple uh, pleading the cause of the poor and needy, you see people who really need Christ and all that stuff, we could very easily just start saying, repent and Jesus loves you and all of that kind of stuff. And if God hasn't prepared their hearts, it's just not going to have any effect. Right. And it's very difficult for our flesh to be still and not just take action. Um, and I can remember <laughs> Mr. Priscilla and I were in Berkeley one time and there was a group doing um, outreach right by the, bar by the subway station and they had worship and then they had speakers and everything else and when we went there Mr. Priscilla felt led to go up there and sing a song with them and it was awesome. And I wanted in my flesh to go over there and do some, share some word, but I felt the Holy Spirit. Well, I just felt like I was being stopped from doing it. Then I got confirmation that that was exactly what God, like, she was supposed to go up there. I was not. And, you know, and I got that from someone completely unrelated that wasn't involved or anything else without knowing the story. Like, you know, that's where I, you know it's God. Mm -hmm. So we, and on our own resources, there's lots of things that we might try to do. And I can 
some of you have witnessed early in my walk that I sometimes he has to put me down on the floor <laughs> to stop me from doing something uh, out of my flesh, right? So, yes, you're absolutely right, Sister Joanna. We have to be led by the Spirit in all things. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons and daughters of God. I was preaching. Yeah. Everything is spirit. That's, that's right. God. That's, that's it. Everything. Yes. If God wants us to go defend those poor persons, he'll tell us to right. go defend those poor persons. But he'll never complain if we pray. That's right. And I pray without yeah. ceasing is, is something you can do and you don't have to worry about whether it's worked okay. or not. Right? Pray for everyone. is always the answer. Yep. Any other comments? And I see well, how... I... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I understand what you guys are saying when uh, Pastor Stephen, you just shared that uh, um your testimony there because on Sunday in service um, as far as being still and waiting to get God's leading because it's all in his timing as well um, like you were saying that it was meant for uh, Sister P to go up and not you um, that's like on Sunday when we was no actually Wednesday we had when we had our Bible study at church we had um it ended up just being just all worship the whole time. And so in our praise and worship, the Lord began to speak to me about someone that was sitting a row up from me. And I felt like, okay, guys, I can't just go. What I want thought was he was saying was to go and um, go and pray with her for these things. And then I said, I stopped myself. I believe it was the Holy Spirit made me think. Okay, there's always, um, how do you say it? There's always order, you know. Everything God does is in decent order. And I'm not sure how the church do when it comes to stuff like that. You know, I've seen people in the church just go and hug somebody or pray with them, what have you. However, I'm not a member, and um, I haven't been in this church too long anyway. So just when I said, okay, God, I just can't just go walk to her. And then I kept saying, okay, I'm going to do it, you know, because I thought maybe it was the enemy trying to, put doubt in my mind or fear and then it just clicked no you don't always have to go to somebody and pray for them and I sat in my seat and began to pray those things that the Lord showed me to pray for her and I was at peace and I was at peace and it was it was good it was good so yeah it's always good to be led amen 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 in Isaiah 1, did you have something? Oh, yeah, I just wanted to say real quick. You know, I was at a restaurant one day. And I was sitting down eating by and shit. And there was a guy and a woman sitting at the table across from me. And the lady was on the phone, and she was just yelling and screaming at one of her workers. And she was telling them how bad they were doing and what the job they were doing. Just, just really just giving her the ride at just, just first group. And God told me that I want you to get up, go over to that woman, and tell her to have compassion on a worker. And I said, Lord, you want me to get up, go over to this screaming woman who is hysterical and acting nuts, to tell her to have compassion. The Lord said, yes. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. So I got up, I went over to the table, I said, they told her my name. I said, I have a message to you from the Lord. I said, you can do with it whatever you please. You can believe me and think I'm crazy or not. But I have to give you this message because God told me to give you this message. I said, God told me to tell you that it's okay that your worker made these mistakes. It's okay. He said, you 
not to have compassion for her and forgive her for the things that she did. And I want God wants you to do that. And so I, I gave the message. I said, okay, this is whatever you want to do it, however you want to take it, whatever you want to do. I said, I walked up. And I know they probably thought I was out of my head, but it doesn't matter. It was the will of God for her to know that and to know that God was listening and that what she was doing was not right. And uh, I don't know what the outcut came. Maybe she apologized. Maybe she did. Maybe she had compassion. Maybe she did. But, you know, it's about being led, as we're talking about. And that's a good example of being led and defending the poor. Because this woman was obviously poor and needy and needed some kind of guide. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just remembered that just now. Amen. Okay, any other comments? In Isaiah 1, verse 17, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. Amen. It's a rebuke to the, your, your testimony. You were rebuking the oppressor. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Spirit. Spirit led. Yeah. Yep. The loud that let it go. But it's okay. Rebuke the oppressor. Any other comments? In Leviticus 19, verse 15, you shall do no injustice in judgment, you shall not be partial to the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. In righteousness, you shall judge your neighbor. You're always be fair and impartial to everyone, showing no favoritism. Partiality. God treats us all the same. He loves us all the same. We should do the same. Amen. We shall not be partial to the poor. Right. You know, see, in our nature, nat natural self, our fleshly person, we size people up and we decide who needs the attention and who doesn't. But God doesn't do it that way. And God, regardless of a person's status in life on here, God looks in the heart. God knows what they need. So we have a tendency to treat certain types of people a certain way, but that's not the way God works. That's why, again, it's important to be led by the Spirit. There could be Homeless people that God is going to let them be homeless until they get humble. And there could be rich people who are very generous and we think that, you know, they're just greedy and all that. We have our own judgment. We don't know what's going on inside of them, but God does. That's the righteous judgment. That's God's judgment. Praise the Lord. Amen. I know there's another verse uh, in the old. I think it's the Old Testament that says God is not a respecter of persons, mm -hmm. which kind of means the same thing. Right. Not, yes. Not, um, not looking at them according to what their station is in life. That's right. Also, to that passage where uh, the, the men are getting, getting talents, uh, the Lord gives them talents, and the, and the one just Buries his. Well, he got no respect for that because that was that was not what he should have done. He should have he should have uh, increased. And so, and and I think that falls into that uh, category. This passage here. Uh, 
should not be partial to the poor. No honor the person of the life. So, so that's what I see it in that first step. In righteousness, you should judge your neighbor. Yeah. It's all in there. Yeah. 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 Can I ask a question? Sure. In, in righteousness, it says in righteousness you shall judge your neighbor. And I know we do this through Christ. However, the way we do that is through the word of God. Is that what they're saying? Like, I believe, well, I guess it's not a question. Um, I guess a statement, maybe you can no, leave me either way. Um, I, I believe that through judging through righteousness is through God's word. You, you got to know God's word and, and, and before you can even judge anyone. Because that's like judging them through Christ. And I don't like that word, judge, so much as to say, I mean, I don't know. So am I on the right path or what? <laughs> I don't, I don't know like the word judge that. either. Because in the New Testament, Jesus says, do not judge or you too will be judged. Right. You know? <laughs> in that same manner. Yeah. <clears throat> With that same measure, as, as a matter of fact. However, I think it's um I'm excuse me for the coughing. I think it's like you will know a fruit by you will know a tree by its fruit type of thing. Is that is that kind of like this, that or no? Or Pastor Tyrone, Pastor Rufus, Pastor Knight, anybody? I think the key to this last statement in righteousness, you should judge your neighbor. Well, mm -hmm. the only way you can do that is to bring God's word into it or his what he is putting right. in you. That's, that's okay. where your righteousness comes from or, or your faith right. in God. And so that will bring your righteousness. That, that will brighten your approach okay. to what you're doing here if you're judging your neighbor. Right. Okay. Well, I got to make a comment here. Okay. They brought a woman who was caught in the act of adultery before right. Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, if we judge yes. according to God's word, she should have been stoned to death. Okay. But when they brought her, brought her to Jesus, he didn't say, "You're guilty. I condemn you." Right. 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 So. Everybody else got convicted when he said, the one amongst you without sin, throw the first stone, they left. Uh -huh. He said, where are, where are those who condemn you? There's no one. I don't condemn you either more. Anymore. And then he said, go and sin no more. Okay? Uh -huh. Everybody there was judging in righteousness in their mind. With the people with stones in their hands, they knew God's uh -huh. word. And they were judging that okay. woman. But Jesus was not. Mm -hmm. That's why mm -hmm. Jesus is so clear with us. Don't judge your brother or sister. Do not judge. Mm -hmm. Leave judgment to God. Amen. The only right. way we can judge in righteousness is exactly what Pastor Tyrone's testimony was. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. Pastor Tyrone wasn't judging that woman on the phone. God mm -hmm. was judging that woman on the phone. And God had mm -hmm. a word for her to stop mm -hmm. doing it. That's the only mm -hmm. righteous judgment we can do is be a vessel for God. Jesus himself was our example. He says, I do not mm -hmm. judge. What I hear from the Father, that's what I speak. So he himself right. is not judging anyone. And we are not to judge anyone. We're to show mm -hmm. love and be available. And if God wants to speak to them and use us, he's going to speak to us. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that clears the air. I feel very strongly about this subject because everybody can become a judge when we read the word and say they're not living up to this word. But guess what? Right. Put on that mirror. Neither are we. You're living mm -hmm. up to that word. Right, right, right. right. So that's I why I, I ask. Go ahead. I was going to say in, 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 in where I made my mistake, this righteousness here that 
was in that particular situation was righteousness according to the law, and that's what they were exercising, which okay. was the wrong thing to do here. And so I stand corrected in that regard. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, we want to stone a woman because you or uh, anyone because of some you, you, you know you have you been following some teaching that said that's what you do in this case you stone the person mm -hmm. uh, so, right yes I get that and oh, also oh, like oh, um, oh. Mm hmm Hebrew, the word judge. Mm -hmm. Is there other definitions for it? Yeah, I feel like we're caught up on the word judge, which Pastor Steve, what you said is is good. It clears is it I understand fully what you're saying. Um I I don't know if I even asked my question right or what have you, but um it was something else I was trying to get at. I just don't remember right now. It'll come back to me though. Um. Yeah. Because I know, I know we can't judge anyone, you know, because God only sees the heart. He sees the heart and the mind of the people, so He knows. Um, there was something else I wanted to say. I'm sorry, my short term memory is is bad. I have short term memory loss, but I, it'll come back if it, if it's meant to be said. So if not, then I'll go with. I mean, I'm go with what you said anyway, because I trust you guys. Um, just trust the the spirit of God in you. So I'm trying to figure out what I was trying to say. Yeah, but just saying, go ahead. Keep going. You were saying that we have to have the word of God in us to be able to judge, right? Is that, I think, right. that's your question, right? Well, yes. Yeah. Right. That's, that's why I just wanted to make it clear. It's very important to have the word of God in us for sure. But when it comes but it's to through judgment, discernment. Yeah, it does. But but uh, judgment is such a sensitive, I mean, to, to God, he's right. so adamant about telling us not to judge people. There's a right. reason. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. All have fallen short. Yes, go ahead. So judge in the Hebrew is Shabbat. A definition is to judge or govern. Or govern. Govern. Mm -hmm. So in righteousness, mm. you shall judge or govern your neighbor. But there is no one righteous. No, not one. Mm -hmm. uh, or only one that's God. Right? Mm -hmm. In God. I almost wish it said in righteousness, you shall relate to your neighbor or, <laughs> or, or communicate with your neighbor instead of the, the word there, judge. Judge is there for a reason. Is there for a reason. <laughs> well, I just pray for revelation because it's it's more that I'm trying to say. I just can't get it out right. So um because I'll just do my breakdown of the, the scripture, that's all. My concordance and stuff. So we can carry on. I don't want to get stuck here. But this is the book of Leviticus. Is the book of law. Right, to bring people to Christ when they realize they couldn't do it, so only God should do it. That's the whole point of it. So is the old, yes, Leviticus. One thing I wanted to ask, though, I mean, I think we talked about this before. Um, in Exodus, in the book of Exodus 33, verse 17, so the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, Moses said, please show me your glory. Then the Lord said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will be I'll have compassion on whom I will compassion. Mm -hmm. As if it's only the Lord who can do that. Though. That's right. 
Only he can. That's one of the scriptures I was thinking about too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only he can be gracious to whom he chooses. Right. We have compassion mm -hmm. on whom he chooses. Right. His ways mm -hmm. are higher than our ways, and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. But we may mm -hmm. not understand why. Maybe one person has more grace or he's more gracious or more compassionate than one, but he sees it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, to hold on, when, when, you, when you start getting a little bit nervous about that, just remember, if you're a child of God, you know where you sit in his grace. Mm -hmm. he's, you're his child. And he's not going to mm -hmm. have compassion on one child and not another. We're talking about people mm -hmm. that are not his children, either mm -hmm. now can't say in the future, right? But but if you're in Christ, you have his grace. That's all there is mm -hmm. to remember. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Any other comments? First chapter. Now we talk about the virtuous wife. In Proverbs 31, verse 10, it says, Who can find a virtuous wife? For her work is far above rubies. Amen. Amen. Any comments? I'm virtuous, but I ain't a wife yet. <laughs> 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 getting there though I'm going to get there Lord willing I'm going to get there pours all over <laughs> <laughs> well it almost implies that wow who can find a virtuous wife there are nobody <laughs> no women of virtue around here <laughs> yeah tell me about it huh? saying, you know, it sounds like it's I a difficult see. thing to find well, it is. I mean, if you think about it in the Old Testament, there was a lot of things that weren't right out there. I mean, yeah. in the New Testament as well, but a lot of women were doing a lot of things that weren't right, you know? And and I can just only imagine that a lot of them, well, just thinking of the Bible characters and some of the women that I had studied and how um, the Lord appointed them to go, like, who was it? Um, like Ruth and Naomi and and uh, I can't think of her name. Even how Esther found her husband to be the wife of the king, you know, you, you there was a lot of greed out there, you know, as it is today. But I'm just saying, it's a lot more. It's a lot worse today. However, yeah, since you brought that up, is women weren't doing everything they were supposed to do back then, or doing things the right way, they was like they were supposed to, you know. Spiritually, who is the wife that God is looking to be virtuous? The bride of Christ. The church. Okay. The bride of Christ. You're right. The it's the least. church, isn't it? Hmm? Yes. yes, it is. It's about the church. Okay. So as we go into this particular chapter, whenever we're looking at these, we can look at the fact of the role of a woman, a wife, and also, because it is relevant, but it's a message for everyone because we are all part of the, because we should be all a part of the bride of Christ, right? Exactly. And virtuous in Hebrew is kayo. The definition is strength, efficiency, wealth, army. So the church, strength, efficiency, okay. last word. wealth, army, army, wealth, wealth and army, like army. army. So like in the song, uh, Break Every Chain, like he's building up an army, right? Mm -hmm. And that is the mm -hmm. bride of Christ, the church. Mm -hmm. and, and that well oh. would be spiritual riches. Absolutely. What was that? The spiritual what? What did y'all say? Because y'all caught it in and out. I'm not sure if it's my phone or not. Oh, um, the, the word virtuous in Hebrew. Yeah. Uh-huh. I got that. A, it was something Sister Joanna just said. 
or um spiritual well spiritual riches you okay know, yeah you can be poor mm -hmm. in a material way but be rich in in christ you can be rich right in a right right way yeah okay i just i just didn't hear because it was going in and out okay thank you any other comments In Proverbs 8, verse 11, for wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her. Amen. Mm. Wisdom is priceless. God's wisdom. The wisdom of this world mm -hmm. is foolishness. Please. God's wisdom, yeah. I think we'll stop here and tackle the rest of the virtuous woman next week. Yeah. Any other comments before we close? Yeah, for wisdom is better than rubies. That's <clears throat> we're talking here about the fear of the Lord. That's and that's the wisdom and that God desires for us to have. And we get that through his through our reverence for him. Therefore our fear of him. Praise the Lord. Any other comments? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together in your word. Thank you for blessing us all today with your wisdom and our understanding. And just uh, thank you for your presence that being in the midst of us this evening. And we just lift up everyone there this day, this night. Lord, I pray you give everyone a good night's sleep and get us ready for the Sabbath day tomorrow. And just uh, help us and guide us and direct us. Be with us as we sleep, as we prepare, as we continue to just lift up another day to you, another day to walk with you. And we give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Bless you Amen. All. Good night. God bless. God bless. God bless everyone. God bless. God bless.